I'm Spencer Mazik, and joining me now is Nathan Hockman. He is a partner at Bingham McCutcheon who represents Grammy Award-winning artist Lauren Hill in her tax evasion case. After pleading guilty last year to three counts of failing to file tax returns, Ms. Hill was recently sentenced to three months in prison. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. So, Nathan, before we get to the details of this case and obviously the outcome, can you tell us how did you come to represent the singer and actress in this matter? Uh, I was contacted by Miss Hill's business manager uh, probably about two years ago or so. Uh, as she was in the middle of the investigation dealing with her failing to file uh, tax returns for a number of years. Uh, at that point, the investigation was pretty much towards the end. So we had a number of uh, meetings with the Department of Justice, both in New Jersey and back in Washington, D.C., until we eventually uh, reached a resolution, shall we say, because that resolution actually did not have Ms. Hill enter into a plea agreement. The government charged her with three counts, three misdemeanor counts of failing to file her tax returns, and she went into court and, as they call it, pled straight up. She pled straight to the uh, three charges without any plea agreement. And what were the specific charges to which she pled guilty? And I want to just be clear about that because there's so much out there in the press. Sure. What she, the only thing she pled guilty to was failing to file her 2005, 6, and 7 tax returns on time. That's all she pled guilty to, and those are each misdemeanor, not felony charges. So through social media, Lauren Hill has tried to explain why it is that she didn't pay her taxes for at least three years. And so what was her reason? So what Ms. Hill made clear is that she was offering explanations, not excuses for her conduct. As, as far as her conduct in failing to follow the returns, she fully accepted responsibility for that conduct and was prepared to deal with the repercussions of it. As far as the explanation goes, the explanation goes all the way back to the, the late 1990s when Miss Hill was, uh, in 1998, you know, she won five Grammy Awards for her breakout album, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, but then got into a, 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 a turmoil uh, with the sort of commercialization of the music industry, that they were asking her to do things she was uh, not prepared to do. Uh, it then became a battle, as she put it, for her own survival. And she had to break with the music industry, break with the people around it that were trying to destroy her. Uh, and as part of that struggle and turmoil that she engaged in over the next decade, unfortunately, not paying uh, and excuse me, not filing her tax returns was part of it. Well, and she also stated that she intended to file her tax returns eventually. But as you know, and unfortunately for her, we don't get to choose when we pay taxes. But so what was the actual sentence, the exact sentence for the singer? And how does that compare to what prosecutors saw here? Sure. The prosecutors saw the maximum sentence. And the maximum sentence for failing to file three years of tax returns, each of which is a misdemeanor, with a one-year maximum would be three years or 36 months. Prosecutors uh, filed a, a bunch of paperwork along that line. The prosecutors adamantly argued that 36 months was the appropriate sentence. However, the judge was not persuaded. The judge basically heard that Ms. Hill was a first-time offender, had no criminal history, by the time of sentencing had fully paid back not just the taxes for 2005, 6, and 7, but all the taxes all the way through 2009, and not just the federal, but the state taxes as well. That's why the amount was about $970,000, although she was only um, liable in the case for $554,000. They also heard about Ms. Hill's uh, decades of charitable contributions, uh, the fact that she has uh, familial obligations to six children between the ages of 15 years and, f and 20 months, uh, and that Ms. Hill was prepared, again, to always pay her taxes. As she put it, the, the question was not if she was going to pay her taxes, but when. And when she came through and paid her taxes before sentencing, the judge took all these factors into account in giving her a three-month sentence, not a 36-month sentence. And then as part of her probation, she'll have three months of house arrest. Well, and do you think, had she met the, or tried to make more of an effort to meet the first restitution deadline in this case, do you think the sentence would have been just a little different for her? Uh, the judge obviously wanted Ms. Hill to pay her taxes. It was something that we had told the judge and the prior judge that Ms. Hill was going to do before her sentencing. 
So I th yeah, whether the judge in this case would have been influenced to go lower than three months, again, the judge never said that when she actually gave out the sentence. She did take into account, though, that the fact that Ms. Hill came through with her promise to pay her taxes, and I think she also noted that Ms. Hill did better than just paying the $554,000 at issue in the case before the judge, that Ms. Hill paid about $420,000 additional dollars that, she, that this criminal case would not have obligated her to pay. Well, and although she didn't receive three years in prison, her sentence here isn't exactly a slap on the wrist. Why is it that some celebrities like, say, Willie Nelson, they get off with no jail time and others don't in these types of cases? You know, unfortunately, it's a it's the, the system, um, as a recent prosecutor has put it, is random and arbitrary in where it draw the lines. Uh, again, the, whether you get a particular IRS agent or a manager of an IRS agent that decides to turn a civil case into a criminal case, it, it really is, is fairly random. I mean, the, the notion of civil fraud and criminal fraud is the same issue, the same underlying issue of fraud. And the dividing line is perhaps just the uh, amount of proof that you have to bring to turn a civil fraud into a criminal fraud. So I've had many cases where the, the case ended with civil fraud and didn't you know, tr cross that, that sort of imaginary line into criminal fraud. And I've had situations where you know, the, the case started as a criminal case and you couldn't get it off the criminal track. Why Ms. Hill's case got referred over for criminal prosecution rather than civil prosecution remains a mystery. Well, is it likely that she might uh, be assigned to a reduced security facility near her home in South Orange, New Jersey? The judge has recommended uh, a reduced uh, security. Ms. Hill would obviously qualify it as a first-time offender with no uh, instances of, uh, of flight or um, danger to the community at all. So now the decision turns to the Bureau of Prisons. The Bureau of Prisons looks at this sort of constellation of factors as to where to place someone as well as where they have space available. But we're anticipating that, that the Bureau of Prisons will follow the judge's recommendation. When do you expect to get a decision on this? Usually you get a decision within a few weeks of the, in this case, July 8th, uh, 2013 surrender date. So finally, Nathan, it's been reported that Lauren Hill has just signed a record deal with Sony Worldwide Entertainment. Was the deal born out of this case as a way to generate income to pay taxes and penalties? Uh, no, Th that deal was in the process um, on a completely separate uh, track from the deal, any deals dealing with the criminal case at all times. Obviously, to the extent that Ms. Hill needed to uh, raise certain funds to pay her taxes, uh, the funds that she will get from the record deal uh, would be used to pay those taxes. But the, the two are, are not linked in, beyond that, uh, beyond the fact that uh, money from one might be used to pay for the uh, debts of the other. Well, and no matter the reason for the record deal, I'm sure that her fans are excited for some new music. She remains an inspiration and role model for many. So thanks so much for joining us today to talk about her case. My pleasure. For more information on this or other topics, subscribe to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.